Hey family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. I have another word for you from the Lord. And the title of this message is, You're Getting a Makeover. You're Getting a Makeover and New Garments. And this message comes out of Esther chapter 2 and Isaiah 61. So again, you're getting a makeover and you're going to get new garments, both spiritually and naturally. So let's go to Esther chapter 2. God's getting you ready. Hey, I received this word too. All right. So Esther chapter 2 was after um, <clears throat> King Ahasuerus, or Xerxes was another name, was displeased with his wife, the queen Vashti, because she didn't come when he called because he wanted to show her off to all of his, his friends and his prime ministers and governors because she was so beautiful. And she was throwing a banquet for her own ladies, but I think it was because she didn't want to be a piece of meat paraded in front of them. But still, when the king summons, you you come, and she didn't. So one of his uh, governors uh, said, hey, you know, why don't you uh, dispose of her so all the other women don't follow her example? And let's get all the virgins in the province or the whole realm of your uh, reign to come before you and you can pick a new bride and of course he was pleased with that so we're going to be we're going to start with Esther chapter 2 verse uh, 4 this thing pleased the king and he did so or this idea in Shushan the citadel there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai the son of Jair the son of Shemuel the son of Kish a Benjamite Kish had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been captured by Jeconah, the king of Judah, who Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. You know, they, they were taken captive more than once because of their rebellion and disobedience. And Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, or Esther is her name, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. So she was a, uh, an orphan, and her uncle Mordecai was raising her. Mordecai took her as his own daughter. Um, so, so it was the king's command and decree were heard. And when many young women were gathered at Shushan, the citadel, under the custody of Hegai, that Esther also was taken to the king's palace into the care of Hegai or Hegai, the custodian of the women. He was in charge of all the, the maidens that came in. Now the young woman pleased him already. Haggai loved her. She found favor with him, and that was God's favor because God had a plan in this. There was a reason why she became queen, and she obtained his favor. So he readily gave beauty preparations to her besides her allowance. Hey, I received that. Then seven choice maid servants were provided for her. From the king's palace and he moved her and her maidservants to the best place in the house of the women now before I go any further I'm gonna read um, I looked up the Citadel in Shushan today is located in the Zagros mountain region of Shush it looks like Kuzitstan province in Iran uh, it was on the western side on the outskirts of the city of Shush is where the uh, citadel of Shushan still stands today. It's in Iran, and that's where Esther was brought to become the queen of King Xerxes. And I found out, she read, she was only 14 when she was brought to the king. I thought she was, like, older, but she was 14. So again, let me read that. It was when the king's command and decree were heard and when many young women were gathered at Shushan, the citadel, under the custody of Hegai, that Esther also was taken to the king's palace into the care of Hegai, the custodian of the women. Now the young woman pleased him and she obtained favor, so he readily or quickly gave her beauty preparations to her besides her allowance. And when I read that, the Lord said, tell them, I'm going to do the beauty preparations for them in the spirit and in the natural, but I'm going to also provide the finances to do it. So, you know, you might be getting a new hairstyle, you're going to get a new wardrobe, go, go get a massage, get a pedicure, manicure, 
God is going to start preparing his maidens to meet their kings or meet their husbands. Not that you don't look good now, but it, it all goes with where he's taking you. You know, where God is taking you is a, is a palatial blessing, a palace, palatial. And he's going to bring you into a new place and a new season. See, what you see around you right now and men watching this video, God's going to elevate you in a place where you can become like the king to these women. And he's going to provide for you. And right now you may say, well, I don't hardly have two nickels to rub together. God said he's going to make a provision for you. And I'm going to do a video on provision. So, ladies, the Lord is getting us ready. And Esther had to, just like all the other young women, the ladies, the virgins, they had to go through 12 months of purification and preparation. And six months of that year, it was done with um, oils. So the oils that were used were myrrh. And one of them, you know, myrrh is an essential oil, just like frankincense. And it's taken out of tree resin. It has to be actually burned to create an oil. Myrrh is used, it kills pain, and it kills bacteria. Uh, the, that was one of the um, essential oils, or the oils brought to Jesus for his burial, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, she was also given cassia or cassia. It's an ingredient, it's an ingredient in anointing oil, and it's a form, it's a cinnamon, it's in the cinnamon family. And cassia or cassia is very strong. So if you use essential oils, always make sure you put the drops on a carrier oil, like olive oil, avocado oil. You could actually put it on butter. You could spray some out of a can. But don't put it directly on your skin because it will burn you. You could put some drops in your bath water. The other thing she used was aloes and al aloes were considered a perfuming agent and aloe is good for burns just like lavender oil lavender oil is a very good first aid to keep on hand and it's good for helping you sleep it's good for bug bites bee stings but it's also good for burns whether it's a chemical or you accidentally touch the stove or you cut yourself put some lavender oil on it <clears throat> and of course we know lavender will help you sleep as well um, then six months after that she was given perfumes and cosmetics to make her um to be prepared perfumes cosmetics i'm sure they did her hair and they did the little t on the hands and stuff but god wants you to know he's going to provide all of this he's going to he's going to open the door for you to do this and it might be through raising your job you might get unexpected money or maybe you get engaged and he starts paying for all the things you want to do. But it took Esther a year to be prepared to go before her king. And I believe that we have been in that year of preparation. You have been in that year of preparation. Some of you next year may be your year of preparation if you're just, excuse me, coming into this word and this walk for the first time. Some of you are just coming out of the wilderness or coming you know you're halfway through the wilderness so always any prophetic word that i or anyone else gives test the spirits first john 4 take it to the lord and make sure this is the word for you and lord you know speak to me about this word what should i know about it is it of you you know because i go to the lord before i do these messages but uh make sure it's for you and it's your season so six months she washed and cleaned with aloes myrrh and cassia she basically was cleansing her body and perfuming her body of all um, bacteria. Because, you know, when you're out there in the desert and you're walking around, there's all kinds of stuff and you, you might be smelly. You know, there could be bacteria because maybe back then they didn't have the medicinal um, remedies they have today. But also, you know, cinnamon is a very strong one and cinnamon is very cleansing. You know how we were talking the other night on a live, how, you know, I love to put cinnamon in my coffee. I think I read... I'm not a doctor and I'm not professing this, so you'll have to go to your doctor, but I think it's good for like blood pressure or something like that too. But um, I just love it in my coffee and I, I make overnight oatmeal and I put it in that as well. So cinnamon is another good thing, a spice to have in your um, spice cabinet. Okay, so he gave her an allowance, but not only that, he gave her seven choice maid servants. So if you've ever gone to the grocery store and you bought choice beef or it said prime choice, I mean it was like top shelf. It was the good stuff. 
he got, he got, she had so much favor with him, which was the favor of God, that he moved her in her maid service. He gave her seven, and seven is the number of completion or perfection. He moved her and her maid servants to the best place in the house of the women. She was already getting a lady, a lady in waiting court, even, even though she was only 14 and hadn't been chosen yet. God was already preparing her for, to be a queen because she had favor with the man in charge who brought her to the king. He gave her seven of the best maid servants, and he also gave her an allowance, the best clothes. He gave her everything. So God was preparing her to be a queen. And that's how you know when God's favor is on you and he's preparing you for something is it just starts falling into place and you're so blessed. And she just walked in to the, you know, the king's court of women as, as an orphan. And her uncle Mordecai brought her there because it was decreed that she come. Verse 10, Esther had not revealed her people or her family yet. For Mordecai had charged her, told her not to reveal it. And every day Mordecai paced, <laughs> bless his heart, in front of the court of the women's quarters to learn of Esther's welfare and what was happening to her. He still loved her. She was as his own daughter and he walked back and forth. That's just like a daddy or a parent. I'd be the same way if that was my daughter. Where is she? Is she okay? What are they doing to her? I know it's good, but I want to know where she's at. <laughs> Verse 12, each young woman's turn came to go into King Ahasuerus or Xerxes after she had completed 12 months preparation according to the regulations for women. For thus were the days of their preparation appointed. Six months with oil, myrrh, cassia, and aloe. I read that somewhere else. And six months with perfumes and preparations of cosmetics for beautifying women. Thus, Thus prepared, each young woman went to the king, and she was given whatever she desired to take with her from the women's quarters to the king's palace. Again, here is the provision. God is going to give you the provision to prepare to go see the king. Not only the king or the husband that God has for you, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's going to prepare your heart. He's going to purify your heart. You know, that's why you want to say, Lord, you know, created me a clean heart, O oh Lord, like Psalm 150 or Psalm 51 that King David wrote. Created me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Purge me with hyss hyssop and I will be clean. You know, men pray that too. Um, but she was given whatever she wanted to take with her from the women's quarters. Clothes, makeup, jewelry, hair. It was all, you know, the right shoes, the right bag, everything. <laughs> God is going to make sure you don't go in there empty-handed. And that's what he's saying to me right now. I don't care if you don't have anything. The Lord said you will not go empty-handed. And you will go when I, when I prepare you and when I open the door for you. There, there we go back to those words about open doors and closed doors. Um, in the evening she went, and in the morning she returned to the second house of the women, to the custody of Shazgaz, <laughs> the king's eunuch who kept the concubines. And those were all his side wives, mistresses, side chicks. I don't think they were wives. I think they were mistresses, but it was a bunch of women. Well, this guy kept charge of them. Um, she would not go into the king again unless the king delighted in her and called her by name. Now, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abi, Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go to the king, she requested nothing but what he guy, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised. You know, she was happy with what he gave her because he gave her the best anyways. But that's also a sign of humility. There was nothing wrong with wanting something nice to go before the king. But um, she was happy with what he guy gave her because she knew it was right and it was favored and she was humble. She was probably like, I'd be just, you know, grateful to be chosen or, or have the chance to be chosen. Now, when the turn, okay... And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. That was the favor of God surrounding her as, as a shield. Psalm 5. Um, 
you just go in the favor of the Lord, go in the joy of the Lord, the beauty of the Lord. His, his, your gift will make room for you is what I'm hearing him say. Many of you, I'm not, not necessarily buying a gift. You might feel led to, but the gift that God has given you will make room for you. So, so Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. And Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tabath, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. Well, she's just covered in grace and favor from the moment she steps into those palace grounds. That was the Lord because he had a mission and he had an, an assignment, but he also had a blessing for her and her uncle Mordecai. Her uncle Mordecai had been taking care of her as an orphan. I'm sure they both were going through rough times, but in the end, God took care of her and her uncle. So, and, and he became the uncle of the queen. So, the king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast. Okay, there's going to be a great feast. There's going to be some wonderful uh, banquets. You might have a big barbecue or you might, this could be your, uh, your wedding ceremony dinner. This could be your rehearsal dinner. This could be your reception after the wedding or it could be at the engagement party. Some people do different things. Um, he made a great feast of, for, for Esther of all his officials and servants, and he proclaimed a holiday in the provinces and gave gifts according to the generosity of a king. So for all his officials and servants, what I'm seeing is this person that God has for you has connections or they're going to be connected. And, you know, they might be known in high places they might be in authority leadership but they're going to they're going to know you and maybe it could just be you know all the elders in the family the brothers but you're going to be blessed through this and you're going to be known in the provinces because the, the word i gave about um what is it your relationship will will be fire in the city or it'll set the city on fire i released that a few months ago if you want to uh Watch that. It just came to me. It's going to set the city on fire, and it's going to go and go and go. Trust me, I, I've experienced that before. Rest in peace. And it can happen. And he proclaimed a holiday in the provinces and gave gifts according to the generosity of a king. This was a very generous king from what I read in, in uh, Esther 1, 2, and 3. King Ahasuerus was pretty generous. He not only gave to Esther and to Mordecai, he gave to all of the people that served him, he gave, he just gave gifts to everybody. So God's going to put you in a place of blessing. And um, the other garments he's got, let's talk about the garments he's going to give you. Well, of course, whenever he blesses you with this new place in your life, this new king, this new spouse, or the queen, you know, the men, your woman's going to do things for you too. And she's going to find a way to bless you. So let her bless you. <laughs> um, Isaiah 61. Here's another garment. that God, This is your spiritual garment. Remember the Bible says on earth as it is in heaven. You want your spirit to, to first fully be adorned or mostly adorned. You know your husband can be the one that adds more adorning to you. They can. Um, Let's see, Isaiah, and I'm going to read from the Eastern Standard Version, which is a lot like New King James. These are the garments the Lord's going to give you. We're going to read Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. The year of the Lord's favor. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison door, open doors to those who are bound, to proclaim the, the year of the Lord's favor, the year of the Lord's favor, and, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, 
to grant those who mourn or grieve or battle depression, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress. It could be your wedding veil. It could be, you know, new hair pieces. It could be a new hairstyle. It could be a crown or a tiara. You know, I'm seeing some crowns and tiaras. It could be what you're wearing in your wedding or you might... You might be, you know, considered a princess in a family because, you know, they're well known or you might marry into royalty. You know, it may not be somebody that's been heard of, but I'm seeing crowns and tiaras. But it's the crown of the Lord, like the crown that uh, King Ahasuerus set on Esther's head at 14 years of age. To give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. People who mourn in the Bible would sit outside and they would rub ashes all over their face, their body, their head. They would sit in like sackcloth, which could be like a burlap sack or just a, a cloth covering and they're covered in ashes because that was their way of letting people know they were mourning and grieving. The, here it is, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, or here it says, instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations or desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. God will use you not only be a generational curse breaker, but a generational restorer. And... He's, he's given you, he's given all of us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, he gives us robes of righteousness when we are saved. And if you have not been born again and you don't have a relationship with God or a covenant with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray with you in a minute to lead you to the throne and to the Lord himself. Um, Strangers shall stand and tend your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of nations, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, there shall be double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. The Lord's telling me to read this. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double portion. They shall have everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. God is going to give you beauty for ashes. He's going to give you the garment of praise. I see him right now. He's just putting it on us. I feel it coming on on me like this new garment, this new this new blessing and I I speak it over you and I decree it over you. Everyone watching this video or who's going to watch it in the replay, whether tomorrow or 10 years from now or a year from now. Receive this word and if this word is for you, put in the comments, I'm getting a makeover, or you can just put the word makeover. It's spiritual and it's natural because you've been grieving, you've been sad, you've been brokenhearted, you've been waiting, and the Lord said your time of preparation is about to come to an end. Some of you, you've been going through a year or two or sometimes longer of preparation. The longer it takes, it's usually because there's more that God has to work out and he's also very uh, tender-hearted. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to rush you and force you. That's the devil who rushes and forces. So if someone's putting pressure on you and rushing you, you tell it to go in the name of Jesus. That's not the Holy Spirit. He's a gentleman. He waits lovingly for people to come to Christ with loving kindness. Have I drawn you? Is what he says in his word so if you're watching this video right now and you're not sure if you're born again or in covenant with God or maybe you once did accept Christ and would like to rededicate your life I'm going to give you Romans 10 uh, 9 through 13 we're going to read the first few scriptures it says if you confess with your mouth and believe believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead you will be saved for with the heart man or woman, people believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. We come into, um, we receive Christ and his work on the cross to be redeemed from the curse that where Adam fell in the garden, because Jesus is also called the second Adam, and his sacrifice was the final blood sacrifice for all sin, all mistakes, all sicknesses, disease, depression, mental illnesses, 
um, poverty, lack. He ended it all on the cross because he said, the word says Jesus was rich, but but through his he became poor so that through his poverty we might become rich in many ways, you know, spiritually because we prosper and are in health as our soul prospers, which is our mind, will, and emotions. So get ready for this makeover and these new garments that the Lord is about to give you. So now I want to pray with you. If you'd like to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to close your eyes and just focus on Jesus right now. If there's someone in the room, you can hold hands with them if they want to pray too. And just pray, simply repeat this prayer after me to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior and I accept your gift of salvation. Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wash me in your blood and baptize me in your fire. I surrender my will, my body, my heart, and my mind to you in exchange for yours. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. That's all you had to do. And I just took you through the scriptures, and you are now a child of God. You are in covenant with God through the, through the blood of Jesus. And I just want to welcome you to the family of God, the bride of Christ. That peace you're feeling, that warmth, that, that cleansing you're feeling, that's the Holy Spirit doing it. And if, if there's a, I'm seeing somebody, that spirit of anger is coming out of you. I just cast that spirit of anger out of you. You've been asking the Lord to help you get over it, stop being angry and cussing and lashing out at people. And you, it's been a spirit that's been controlling you. And I break it off of you and command it to come out of you in the name of Jesus. There you go. Let it go. Let it be replaced by your love, Jesus, and your peace. Now you tell it to leave you and come out in the name of Jesus. That's a generational curse, and I break it off your whole family in the name of Jesus. And I draw a bloodline that I put the blood of Jesus between the living generations and the deceased and call you free. So your next step, hallelujah, the angels are rejoicing according to Luke 15 over one sinner that repents. Your next step is water baptism. Uh, Jesus was baptized and it's a sign of going down in the water is the old you and you come up the new creation in Christ. And it's another way to publicly confess your faith, but there, your faith, but there is like healing and deliverance in the water too. So you have to be born again to be baptized, and you were, you just received Christ. God is still doing deliverance on this one person, so you just keep letting Him do it. It doesn't matter how long it takes. But when you get up off that floor or out of that chair, you're going to be a different person because you're already born again. And I cast those demons out of you. There's more than one. They're coming out of you. And I decree you free in the name of Jesus. So when you get water baptized, I pray that an opportunity comes to you very soon, whether it's at a church, community, lake, beach, river, backyard pool. Somebody gets a big, a big uh, metal, uh, like a trough that animals drink out of, fills it up with water. You can do that. Just whatever the Lord opens the door for you. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you are not a subscriber, I want to welcome all of our new and returning subscribers. Welcome our new and returning channel members who so monthly see. That's optional. It's free to be a subscriber. Um, to subscribe, just hit the bell icon, click the word all, and if that way you can receive more words, more videos, uh, lives, shorts, things that I do. We're doing a live stream tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. You're welcome to join us. Um. To go ahead and subscribe so you can get the notification because I've already uploaded it. And also, I just want to thank all of you for your prayers, your love, your uh, standing in the gap for each other, your financial support, sharing the video, liking, commenting. All of that keeps the channel going and growing. So we're getting close to 2K. So thank you, Jesus, and uh, 200 and be encouraged. So 
uh, if you want to join, be encouraged. It's B E E encouraged. That's over on Facebook. You're welcome to join us. I did have a song that the Lord gave me, and I'm not going to read it because it's a long song, but I'm going to give you the title, and I'm going to put it in the description of the video. It's, it's called Beauty for Ashes by Crystal Lewis. I love that song. Beauty for Ashes by Crystal Lewis. And, and always go into the description of each video. Just click the word more under the title, and it should show the description. And I usually start with salvation. I put all the scriptures in there and go back and read them and study them and let the Holy Spirit minister to you and speak to you through it. And also I put the song in there. So, well, I love you all. I thank you for um, liking and subscribing and being here and being a part of the Salt and Light family. And I will see you in the next video. And also if you, let me just do this. If you prayed the prayer of salvation or you recommitted your life to the Lord, I want you to put a three in the comments. That stands for Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that will let me know so I can pray for you, celebrate with you. People who see it in the comments will, will you know, celebrate with you too because I'm so excited. That is like my main goal is to bring people to Christ, to have what he's done for me. So I'll see you tomorrow night on the live or in the next video, okay? And I love you all. Bye-bye.